Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And if you ever tried to make API calls from a, to a third party, okay, in your front end applications, you've probably had situations where a third party API did not set up course permissions on their API, which means you end up getting like a cores error that says, sorry, you, um, let me see if I can actually find a screenshot of one cores error. Images, you've probably gotten something that looks like this, okay? Access to yada, 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 has been blocked by cores policy, no access control, allow origin header. If you've seen my video about cores or listened to my podcast about cores, I explain what cores or cross origin resource sharing there in depth. I recommend listening to that. Um, I'm not gonna go over that whole thing right now, but the basic idea is this. The browser, when it makes requests between websites, sees different URLs with different hosts. Okay, it's so only looking at sort of this part. So if they if this part doesn't match the the website that's making the request to the part that they're requesting, if these that part doesn't match the host, it um, then expects it makes what's called a pre-flight request where it says, "Hey, let me just check to see if uh, I'm allowed to make a request here." So if you ever actually explore the network tab of your browser, so if you were to hit the dev tools, control shift I, this part right here, and you were to make an API request somewhere, you'll often notice that there's like two requests. Let me see if I can make an example. Um, okay, actually, let me do this. Shift I, refresh the page. Let's see if I can get to do the thing. Okay, see, like here we're not getting it because it's the, the where it's making the request to here is the same as a host. So it doesn't have to make that initial request, but sometimes you'd see like it makes two requests and one of those requests will have like options as a method. That's the what's called the pre-flight request, which means it's not finding the right headers. That's when it knows there's a problem. So that fails and then it doesn't even bother to make the second request. Um, so if it's a third party API though, the, the place where you're supposed to be making these course headers that prevent this error is on the API itself. So if it's not your API, there's nothing you can do about it. And that's usually by design. They don't want you making, they either don't want you making a request to their API without permission. So you have to like pay, uh, get the right kind of security clearance to have them add you, or they just don't want you making it in the front end. Because even if you get an API key from them and you expose your API key in your front end code, someone can just go into your code. So I can go right over here to your source code and like, you know, find all the stuff, you know, that makes up your code. Okay, and I can find that API key or I can go into my network and see the requests that were made in your website, and I can find the API key and then access your, basically access that API as you. So it's a security issue. So they'd probably rather than you not make requests to their API from your front end code. Okay, so the way to get around the cores error is through what's called a proxy server. It's not really a special type of server or anything. It's just the idea is that you have a server to communicate with other servers. That's why it's called a proxy server. Proxy always just means a middleman. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So instead of me making the request in my front end code, I'm going to make the request in my back end code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my express folder where I have, uh, there we go, uh, where I have way too many projects already, but we'll make another one. Um, I'm just gonna make, in empty folder. I'm gonna show you how simple this can be. Proxy server. I'm gonna open up this proxy server in an integrated terminal. I'm gonna touch a server.js and I'm gonna do a npm init dash y so I get my package JSON. Okay, and then I'm going to npm install express. I'm trying to think what else I might need. Um, I fetch does not exist in node, so you can't just use the fetch function like you can in the browser. So you have to like install a library that brings it into play. So node fetch is that library. So express node fetch and okay, I think that's really all I need. Um, cool. So huzzah. Okay. So I'm gonna go to my server.js, just set up my normal express boilerplate. So const express equals exp uh, require express 
const app equals express. Then we set up our listener app dot listen on port 3000. And then we pass in a callback. Uh, uh, uh. Console.log listening on port 3000. There we go. So essentially, all I really need to do is just. Oh, wait, I want to bring it in node fetch. So const fetch equals require node fetch. Cool. And then that's it. So now I just create a route app.get so I don't need I don't need any middleware because I'm not expecting to take any JSON in as a request if you are then you would need to set up the JSON middleware um, I would I guess I would still technically need cores middleware so I need to add my own cores middleware so npm install cores okay const cores equals require cores okay and then I would just need to set up that core so that way we just don't get cores errors when you try to make a call to this API. That'd be ironic, getting cores errors when you're trying to avoid cores errors. There you go, that'll clean that up. Um, okay, app.get, we're just gonna say it's just the normal root route. And we get a request response. I'm gonna make this an async function so I can use um, async await and I would just do this const response equals fetch and then I need my API endpoint so that's just gonna be this this gotta be a string okay that's gotta be a wait fetch because we're awaiting async await and then const the data equals await response dot json and then what it would do we send back that data res dot json i mean yeah res dot json and then we would await data just in case okay and then it sends that data back as json that's it okay um, actually, okay, we could even make this more succinct. We could just say res.json equals await response.json. There we go. That's even better. Okay, I'm just going to return the result of that. Res.json, and now let's test that out. Okay. First, we'll just test out to see if the route works, period. So I'm going to do uh, node server.js. OK, listening on port 3000. Let's go to localhost 3000. OK, and see, I get the data. OK. Now, the to test would be, let's make another little mini front end. So I'm going to create another folder. OK, not in there. Uh, let's go point it out here because it needs to be in a separate being served separately. So we'll just call this HTML, whatever. Okay, and here I'm just going to make an HTML file index.html. Uh, I'm going to do the boilerplate here. And I'm going to just use a script tag. So, you know, it's too lazy to attach a separate JavaScript file. So slash script and then let's try to make a request to our server so um, I'll just use normal dot then so I'll just say fetch HTTP slash localhost 3000 um, cool that's that dot then Dot then res equals I mean res res.json dot then data r 
console log the data. Okay, so now we have that. I'm gonna open this up with Live Server. Let's see if that works. Okay, let me open up the Dev Tools. See if we get that console log. Fail to load resources. Server respond with the path 404. Well, but hey, we got the data. See, it's right there. So this is oh, this is the favicon. Okay, yeah, there's no favicon. That's fine. But see, the API call was it worked. Okay, in that case, we avoided the cores error. For, like if JSON placeholder were, were to give us a cores error, we would avoid it because the request to JSON placeholder then come in through the browser. So the browser wouldn't actually check for cores headers. I mean, the our web server wouldn't check for cores headers, so it would just the request would just go through. So our Express server makes the request to um, our web server makes the request to to JSON placeholder, and then our front end, this index.html, makes a request to our web server, and we have the data. So essentially, what all I have to do is deploy this server to, let's say, Heroku, and then I would just use that URL in my front end application, and ta-da. Okay, and I can, you know, you can design this in a way where it's like more adaptable, where you have to pass in the URL and all that stuff, so that way this can make any kind of API call. Well, you can, you know, sky's the limit. You know, it's all a factor of your imagination. But that's essentially the idea behind like things like cores anywhere and other proxy servers. All it's doing is you're making a request to a server who's making another request on your behalf. Um, so again, there's the JSON placeholder API. My express server is making a request to the JSON placeholder API. And so when my index.html makes a request to localhost 3000 where my express server is running, this route gets hit. It makes the request to JSON placeholder. It receives the response from JSON placeholder. It parses it as a JSON object, then sends it back out to um, my front end. And my front end receives it. That's it. That's all it is. That's all a proxy server is. So if you're doing this in some other framework like, like Ruby with Rails or Python with Django, you just have to learn how to make HTTP requests in that language. Every language has their own kind of like equivalent of fetch. You just have to figure out what that is. Um, and you just do the same thing. Okay, so in Python, you would just fetch the data, send it back as a dictionary. That's their object equivalent. In Ruby, you would do a thing like fetch, and then you would get back, and you turn it into a hash, which is their like object equivalent, and uh, you go from there. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Again, uh, join the Slack and uh, Discord community over there at devnursery.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like this video. Share with friends. Have a great day, and enjoy.